on the other side. Hi love. Hello. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So um, this video is about uh, my attempt to complete 100 miles in one go. Um, so we started on the 28th of... You thought I was frozen then, didn't you? So we started on the 28th of May. I almost said June, you're right. So um, it was a Friday morning. I prepared well, um, doing lots of back-to-back -back runs. So I was uh, quietly confident um, in turning up and being ready for the day. So I ordered a tracker um, from a company called Track Trails. Um, they were very good. They set up my checkpoints on the uh, on the tracker for me. Um, sent me the link. Everything was working well. And then on the day when I actually pressed all the buttons, followed the instructions, it just did not want to work. Um, unfortunately, we have these these, these problems. Uh, with technology and the company were very good to be fair um, I messaged them, my boy messaged them we, multiple people tried to, to get it going um, they could see me on their end but nobody could see me this end so it was kind of um, a bit of a disappointment because lots of people wanted to track me and wanted to meet me at different places and the tracker would have, been, would have helped because they would know what time to expect me um, because obviously um, the the kind of times, the, the expected times that I put together, they're only a, a generic sort of um, guide. You know, it could go either way. It could be quicker than planned. It could be slower than planned. So having the tracker, you you would be within a couple of minutes um, of that. So unfortunately, it didn't work. Uh, and the company were very good, and they said because I didn't get any benefit from it, then they would re refund me the the, uh, the money. Which you know, I can't can't ask for more than that. So so thank you for to Track Trail. Um, and I know that um, countless of other times in other uh, races they've been used and they've had no problems at all. So maybe this is just a, just a one-off. So yeah, uh, you know, do check them out. Um, like I say, the, the, uh, everything building up to it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I rocked up, it was drizzling. Um, the weather forecast all week was saying it was going to be fine, uh, going to be quite humid. So I rocked up and it was raining, so I popped on the, uh, the rain jacket. Um, and very quickly I realised that it was a mistake. Um, so I'd run for the first five miles with, with the jacket on and it was actually boiling. You know, I was probably wetter inside than I was on the outside, so uh, we had to stop and, and get that off. So from uh, Panatha Park to Merthyr, um, I was 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Um, and again, so I thought, give me plenty of time to re rejig the uh, the tracker, have another look at that and see if I can work it out. Uh, unfortunately I just couldn't work it out so good. Just come through the first checkpoint. I was ten minutes ahead of schedule. Uh, been having massive problems with getting the tracker working. Still not working. So I've given it to the boy to go away and ring the uh, the hotline to see if he can get it going for me so I probably just spent 15 minutes trying to sort that out which just put me a little bit behind schedule and in all the commotion I forgot to take on food but I have got the tailwind so it's not a full complete disaster yet but I'll definitely need to take on some solid food at the next checkpoint which is all uphill so I've got, got the poles and they will come into their own this is I get to a Ponisic Reservoir and it's all uphill and that's where the majority of my elevation is going to be so I felt absolutely fantastic for the first part but now a little bit of a downer because I couldn't get the tracker working I spent far too much time trying to sort the fucking thing out but hey, let's go get on with it and start tacking and keep going in my mind I wanted to take on some solid food every aid station because I knew um, 100 mile is going to be a long way without without solid food. 
So um, it is pretty uneventful getting to the first aid station up in Merthyr. So then I knew that the, the climbing would start. So I picked up the poles um, and then off I went. Um, this section I was all on my own. The first section I was with Gareth um, and I was thankful for, for his, um, his company. So off I went on my own. Um, like I say, it's probably the worst part as well because it was uphill and everybody must have looked at the map and gone, hang on, it's uphill there. He can go on his own. Fifteen miles in. I didn't plan on having a stitch this early on, but I've got one. So, one foot in front of the other. It'll be gone soon. Whew. Bloody hot today. It was raining when I left, I was quite confident. Oh God, it's zapping. But hey, just think of the views. I'm starting the climb now. So this is all uphill for about 20 miles now. So, yeah, it's gonna be slow. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hot. Ah, wow, how far am I in? Just 17 miles in. This heat is zapping. The humidity is horrendous. Down these tracks, there's no wind whatsoever. And uh, I'm actually struggling with the heat. Whew. But I am taking on loads of fluid. But yeah, I'm just overheating. So it's gonna be a case of run, walk, run, walk, especially the hills. Uh, it's just actually zapping me, taking it all out of me to, at the moment. But yeah, keep plodding. One foot in front of the other. It's slow. It's not pretty. But we're moving. We just want to keep going. I never thought I'd be struggling so early on. Hey ho. Oh, I needed that. Hiya! 21, near 22 miles in. Uh, yeah, we're going. Not very fast, but we're going. Yeah. Looking forward to getting to the car, which is probably about another five miles of all uphill. I'm just gagging for just a proper drink of water. I know I've got the tailwind, but I just, I just need water. You know, sometimes you just gag for a just refreshing cold water, and that's that's all I want. Oh, proper trail. the hills um, and when I was using the poles I don't know what happened but um, I felt quite a, a sharp pain in my left hip to start with um, so I've carried on thought nothing of it you know and then it gradually got worse it shifted from either side um, throughout the throughout the uh, throughout the day um, and by the time uh, that I got back down on the downhill section um, it was quite excruciating to be fair so uh, it was touch and go so I don't really know what happened um, but afterwards I, I spoke to a, a specialist um, who uses poles an awful lot 
and they seem to think that I may have uh, jarred it or pushed it, the, the, the poles have pushed my, my gate out of, an, out of alignment. So that's checkpoint two, just done. I got in there, my hips were killing me. I don't know whether it's because the, I was using the poles. I don't know, I just, just don't know. So, just been through the highest point of the course. So we're up in the mountains now. Nice little downhill section, but it is quite rocky underfoot. But yeah, it's nice to have a little bit of downhill, but I'm still not pushing it. So I'm sticking to about 12 minute miles at the minute, even on the downhills. I'm averaging about 12 and a half, 13 minute miles. But again, I don't want to push it. You know, it's really on. If I push it too hard, I could mess up the rest of it. So, yeah. Bit of belly trouble early on. Uh, a bit bloated. To be honest, I could do the good shit. But, it's just, it's just not ready to come. It's not ready to come. So, got to checkpoint two, which was the, I named the top of the rocky road, basically it's the tram road in the um, top of Talabont. Um, and when I got there, um, my wife was already there with, with Dean and my boy. Um, I knew then I had a bit of a downhill, so if anything that I was behind, I think it was behind about six to ten minutes, um, purely because I just couldn't shake the, the pain in my hip. So I thought, yeah, I can make up a little bit of time on the downhill section, so I weren't too, too bothered about that. Um, and, I, and I did, I started to make really good progress going downhill, um, wasn't too much pain until I got to the very bottom of the tram road where the, the surface is pretty, pretty gnarly um, and underfoot, so um, it was kind of jarring um, and I did get a, bit, a fair bit of pain to be fair, so slowed it down a little bit there. Then I got onto the flat of the canal um, and the pain was, yeah, it was there, um, I knew it was there, um, so I, I made the decision that when I get uh, Get, get to the next aid station that I'd probably have um, I take on some painkillers, uh, quite strong painkillers and see how, how that developed. Uh, so I got to the checkpoint three, um, at this point I think I was about 20-25 minutes behind, maybe a little bit more. Um, it was the Coach and Horses pub in uh, Flanagan Nido in, uh, up in Brecon Beacons. Um, so I thought naturally I can't take on, I wasn't taking on any solid food, I wasn't staying down so plenty of Guinness went down uh, a treat, uh, plenty of uh, carbs and plenty of uh, um, calories in that so I managed to get that down about three quarters of it. Um, yeah so we met up with Sarah at that point um, and Andrew so they, they stuck with me for, Sarah stuck with me for 32 miles to be fair, um, she, it was amazing because she, she ran through the night with me and that was a point where I knew that I would go in and out of um, you know, sort of these dark places and I knew, I knew that'd be a problem for me. So yeah, Sarah stuck with me 32 miles, Andrew's done 13 miles, that's the furthest he's ever run so it, it was good to have him on board and good to see that he, he'd uh, had a, a personal best as well um, and, and over the distance. So yeah, I was super chuffed with that and they were a great, great company. So then we got to um, Clan Foist, uh, which was the sort of a crossing point, um, lovely part of the, the canal where we, we picked up uh, Dallin and Anthony uh, Tronkster. So they, they came with us for a bit. Andrew then uh, dropped off. Um, so we tried again, tried to get a little bit of solid food in. I managed three bites of a hot dog, um, but again, further down the trail um, it, it ended up finding its way out. I just really struggling to, to keep solid foods in. But I, the tailwind was doing its job, um, it, you know, each one of them had 200 calories in there but um, on these distances you really do need to take on a bit, bit of solid food uh, which I was struggling with. Um, you know, the pain in the hip maybe it was, it was connected but every time I tried to eat uh, the pain you know, I just, just, just did not feel like eating at all. My body just did not want to take in any solid food. So, uh, so we went through sort of the night for, for a while, so um, started getting dark around 10, 10, 15. Um, and we got to, the next age station was age station five, but that was Pontypool. I think we got there about one o'clock in the morning, so um, I think I was about an hour behind at this stage. 
um, purely because the hip. It was kind of a, a run, walk, run, walk. Um, my brother Ryan and Cameron met us uh, uh, not on checkpoints, but they were just sort of catching us up on uh, different parts of the bridges along the way. Um, the funny thing I was craving was Red Bull. I haven't touched Red Bull in, in years and I was craving a Red Bull so my brother went out and got me a Red Bull so thanks for that, that, that helped uh, a, a fair bit um, yeah, and so we just kind of plodded on through the night, went, went into some pretty dark places um, and a fair play to Tronkster, Sarah and Dallin, you know, just keeping me, yeah, keeping my, my spirits high, kept, kept me going um, again, you know, I was dealing with the pain in my hip as well so it was a run and walk so we got to Ponypool um, and we were met by Louise, Louise Carpenter uh, from the South Wales running uh, community um, which was fantastic really, it was really good to, to, like, to see a nice nice fresh face, nice bubbly face um, she was there alongside with, with her son, um, I can't remember her son's name now um, I do apologise. Uh, anyway, so so they they, they were there. Um, she had some fresh fruit for me. The only thing I seemed to be able to eat was um, was fruit, which was the uh, melon and pineapple. So um, yeah, it wasn't a, a complete loss. At least I was eating something, I guess, but not high calories. But it was it was something getting in there. So yeah, so we met Louise. Um, Louise was going to then move on to the next checkpoint, which was checkpoint six, 14 locks. Um, that would have been the 66 uh, mile point um, and Louise was going to bring me a, a nice cup of coffee um, but I did say to her, listen, um, because I'm a little bit behind, if you don't make it, Ryan will be there and I'll just catch up with, with Ryan, don't worry about it. Um, she did turn up, uh, Ryan said, but she'd left about 10 minutes before I arrived uh, because her son was getting really tired, you know, bearing in mind this was the early hours of the morning. So she then uh, headed off, which you know I don't blame her and I was really thankful to, to see her out there really. Um, so 40 knocks then, Sarah dropped off and Dallin uh, dropped off, uh, they finished at 32 miles, uh, which the last bit coming into 14 locks, um, a lot of it was up uphill and I found that dragged on for a long, long time. Uh, really did play on the mind to be fair and I really, really could have just jacked it all in there and then, um, I just had enough, um, even Sarah had enough at that point and Sarah's chug training for, for 100 as well. So they, 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 they dipped out at that point, um, Sarah had a class in the morning so she was teaching that so she had to go. So Ryan was there, I managed to get down a little bit of soup, uh, the tomato soup which, which was really nice. Um, so at least I got something hot inside me and uh, give me a little bit more calories to go on. So I'd set off then from 14 locks, I probably was on my own for 20 minutes um, and then Anthony caught up with me again, he'd gone home to get changed and then he'd come back uh, to, to catch up with me again because he knew I'd be still running in the dark on my own um, and he knew, he, he knew that I was in a little bit of pain and I was dipping in and out of these dark places so thank, thankfully he did come back and he stuck with me then till, um, till the halfway house uh, which was checkpoint 7 and that was 76 miles so that that was a, an absolute godsend and again it was run walk run walk it was quite, quite hilly in places and yeah, so I was in a, a fair bit of discomfort. So we got into the halfway house, um, Nicola was there, uh, Anita, Anita was going to run with, with me to the end, uh, which, which was brilliant really because um, she, she's a little ball of fun, just keeps going, she's like a dynamo, she just bounces everywhere and just keep, keeps you sort of get your mind off, off the pain and she just keeps talking, you know, chatting shit as she says. But it was, uh, it was brilliant, it was really, uh, really helpful. So yeah, so we got there, um, I was chafing a bit so I did um, sort of um, uh, vase up, um, Nicola was trying to force some food into me, um, rightfully so, uh, but I just couldn't take it on again, uh, so it was good to have them there. And then Michael stuck with us for I think about five miles as well because we were behind time, he was going to stay with us for longer but he had to get off and get to work. So yeah, it was good to have Michael with us as well. So we got up through Bedless Lanes again, there's a little bit of uphill, that hurt uh, going up. Uh, got through the lanes, it was you know, not so bad then. Um, then my boy and Pedro, his friend, they joined us on the bikes. Uh, Diane joined us on the bike. Um, again, Diane is like a dynamo as well. She, she's a, a ball of fun and just keeps it, keeps it, uh, keeps it real. Um, just says it as it is. If I'm being shit, she'll tell me I'm being shit and move on. 
uh, and then Ryan caught up with us in the in the van as well. Put some music on, uh, blaring out the van. Stop cars coming down too too fast. So you know we he kind of protected us a little bit as well. So that was great. That that, that part um, we flew quite quite fast. And then we got down to the Ponte Grande roundabout. Uh, Susie met us on the Ponte Grande roundabout. Um, she gave us some uh, some of the the uh, ice poles um, or tip tops as as we call them in Wales. Uh, and they were again a godsend. It was, it was good to get something, you know, something uh, sweet, some calories inside. Uh, so we we had them. Uh, Susie stayed with us for about um, two miles, I think, and then we turned right at Caffili Castle and headed up to the um, up to Caffili Garden Centre, which was the checkpoint eight. So I, I rolled into checkpoint eight. By this point, the the hip was absolutely excruciating with pain. I hadn't taken any solid food, um, any substantial solid food, and I was, I was really struggling. So I sat down in Ryan's van. Um, my wife was there. Julie turned up. Julie's a, Julie's a trained nurse, and she said to me, oh, "I strongly advise you do not go on. Um, you know, you, you're not in a good place. You're, you're, you're actually uh, not being very uh, coherent. Um, you're mumbling. You're, you're slurring your words. You actually sound drunk." Uh, a friend of mine, Rob, from work, uh, a good friend, and he said to me, he said, Al, oh, shout at me, and I was looking in a totally different direction, didn't even hear him. People were talking to me, I could see the lips moving, but I couldn't hear a word that was coming out of their mouth, so I knew at that point that I needed to take in some food. Um, and little did I know, I thought I was only in that checkpoint for about 10 minutes, um, and looking back at my watch, I was there for 58 minutes, so in almost an hour I was in there. Um, so I just, I, it goes to show that you know, I needed that food to, to go in. So um, my wife brought a um, mug sausage sandwich. Um, I've not been able to eat, eat anything to this point. So I just tried that and I managed to get, get that into me. Um, it, was, it was like going down in lumps, um, but it was really good. It only took me about five minutes then to come around, have a bit of, have, have some water to wash it down with. Uh, and then I started to feel a bit more myself, come around. Um, but one thing that um, that I noticed as well, it was the heat. The, it, it wasn't sunny, but the, the humidity, the sun was obviously behind, but behind the clouds. But the humidity, um, somebody told me it was 80% humidity, so as, as soon as I changed my t-shirt, it was ringing wet straight through again. Um, and I think that played its part. Um, I did put sun cream on, sun, sun lotion on, but by the time I'd finished, I had actually uh, blistered and sunburned. That's checkpoint, check. Checkpoint eight just done. Um, struggled a bit on that one. I did manage to get some food inside me, so that's great. Stretched everything off, feeling a little bit looser. So we're gonna get down onto the Taft Trail now and see if we can make a little bit of time up. Although I'm not holding up much hope. It's a lot of walk, run, walk, run, because the hips are hurting. And I've got great support crew, 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 crew. <laughs> with me now. I've got Anita. Say hello, Anita. And I've got Dizzy Diane. Say hello, Diane. Come on, Andy. Hello! <laughs> I nearly went. I nearly fell off. I wouldn't have laughed. No, we, we wouldn't have laughed. Yeah. No. yeah I know, yeah. But as you can see again, guys, the heat is coming in now, and I'm really struggling with the, um, the humidity. And I'm hoping now, when we get down to the Taft Trail, that we're going to be in a little bit of shade. And then I can hopefully run a bit, walk a bit, run a bit, walk a bit. Run a bit, walk a bit, run a bit, walk a bit, you get the idea. Right, see you shortly. So at that point, it was touch and go. I didn't know whether I was going to actually finish the, the run at all. Um, and then we got, managed to go, uh, get, get, it was a downhill section uh, to start off with. So I did manage to, to sort of move one foot in front of the other. It was very slow, very painful on the hip. Then we got onto the flat of the Taft Trail. And then at that point, I knew I'd only 15 miles left to go on. You know, even even if I crawled it, I, I could I could make it. So Rob again met us at various points uh, along the uh, the Taft Trail, bringing us ice lollies, just just keeping our, um, our sort of morale up, bringing us fresh water as well. You know, so he, he was an absolute godsend on the the last 15 miles. To be fair, he just kept meeting us at, at different points. Uh, he just he kept popping up in places which I never even knew existed. Uh, as in where you could park and he just kept popping up there. Uh, so he fair play to him, he, he, uh, he read the map really well. So, Right, we're just coming into navigation in. We have got roughly six miles to finish. And I've been given one of these, I've been given one of these. 
Sarah and Andrew brought them for me. Oh God. I just want to finish it now. I've had many ups and downs. Oh well, oh. there's a bit of a camber there. I made it towards the fence. To the navigation in, in, in um, Abercannon. Uh, it's not it wasn't a checkpoint, but the guys that were at the uh, the next checkpoint, which is checkpoint nine, which is Quaker's Yard, they walked down uh, about a mile down the road to meet us. So they, they met us there. At, at this stage, because of the pain, um, I was sort of I was emotional as well. My my emotions were, were up and down. Uh, you know, at one one stage I just wanted to stop and just cry through through the pain of it. Um, a fair play to Anita, she, she just kept me going um, and she ran on at one stage and she said to the guys, listen, one on one, um, he's feel, really feeling it. So guys, you know, you know and I've got to thank her for that because I think if everybody would have rushed down, then I could have been a little bit too much and you know, who knows, I could have broke down, I don't know. So yeah, like I say, this stage I was in uh, uh, quite a bad way and I knew then when I got to Quaker's Yard that it's going to be uh, quite a savage um, uh, uh, chicane section where it was uh, zigzaggy and it was going to be uh, quite brutal because it is quite a steep part. I knew that was going to hurt on the hip because I have to twist these uh, corners as well. I didn't stop at Quaker's Yard because I knew if I stopped it would have been really difficult for me to keep going so I just carried on. Everyone shouted at me, come on there's a, this is a checkpoint, you've got to stop, get some water on. I had enough water um, in my uh, pack uh, and so I cracked on. Uh, at that point Sarah came back as well, so she, she came back out to, to meet us um, again. Sarah's more motiv really motivated, so she kept me going that way. Uh, yeah, so we kind of um, got, got up onto this, the, uh, the, the, the trail which took us back into Penalta Park at this stage then. There's about three miles left, and it was a sort of very, very slow run, walk, run, walk. Um, but mostly walking at this stage because, like I say, the hip was giving me such, uh, such pain. Uh, at this stage, my knee started hurting as well. I shook it with Sean, and she gave me, uh, she gave me her uh, knee support, which was very helpful, and it really helped. It was massive, massive help. Um, so yeah, so the, so the last sort of three miles, the girls were with me. So it was uh, Sean, Sam, um, Jen. Pat had to shoot off. Um, the she only stayed with us for a little while. Um, what else was it? Anita obviously was still with us. Dan was still with us. Um, Oh, if I'd forgotten it, we had to apologise So I say three miles in, uh, left the door, um, and we had to finish on a really steep hill. Um, it goes, we went on for about 500, 600 metres from the bottom of Canal de Park to the top. Um, so that, yeah, that, that kind of uh, really took it out of my hip. Um, it was good to see loads of people at the top. So my wife was there, my mum and dad were there, my brother, uh, Rob was at the top, uh, and a few other people waiting for me to come in. Um, and then as I got to the top of that hill, I knew then I had less than half a mile to, to get to, to the finish point of the point where I started. But again, it was just more of a walk at this stage. I couldn't, couldn't um, my hip was just for, for some reason, and I just to say, I, I, it really, really did really play in my mind as well. Uh, so yeah, we got to where I started. Um, but I still had sort of like 0.3 of a mile to go, so I uh, had to walk up, up around the, uh, the arena uh, just to get make sure that I got to that, that 100 mile point. And then I came back and finished, and all I wanted to do was die. It was uh, the relief was something that I've never felt before. It was really. Um, uh, overwhelming. Um, I'm glad I had the sunglasses on so people couldn't see that I was bubbling up in my eyes and it, and it was just, you know, there's no shame in it. You know, these things are emotional. They will bring out the emotions in you. They, when you do these um, uh, sort of physical, mental challenges, they definitely test you to your, to, to, to your ability. Um, and anybody that says they've run 100 miles and they felt they were fine and they didn't go up through ups and downs, they're lying. Don't forget to stretch off. One new record, there we go. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Recovery, 3.5 days. That's <laughs> better. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I can't see anybody doing that kind of distance without having some sort of dip in there. That being said, um, it was for mental health, uh, to raise awareness for, for mental health, and I wanted to put myself through it because um, I wanted to prove to people that you can go to some pretty shitty, dark places and come out the other side. You've just got to be mindful that you can do it and you've got support. Like I said, I didn't think I'd have the support that I had. and it was really really um, well, awe inspiring really the, the, the support um, I've never experienced it before and it just, just goes to show that you know the club support that we've got and friends family all coming out um, yeah you know they believed in me uh, and, and that to me would really give me that massive lift so I was asked why uh, I wanted to do it at the beginning of the the first lockdown um, this was sort of like a little little my little brainchild was whirling around in my head. I'd had this uh, thought that because there was no races on um, and there was no sign of any races being on in the future, that I'd start planning to run 100 miles. And so I would set the route myself, um, set the, the, the expectations uh, of what, the checkpoints, times I was going to be there. Um, so I started to plan this uh, early on. I didn't really tell anybody, I just sort of kept it to myself. Um, I did tell a couple of people actually, uh, my dad and my, uh, my brother. Um, so they, they knew that I was planning this. And then in November, um, a guy that I follow on YouTube called Craig Williams, he actually went out and done it himself. Uh, but he gave himself very little um, notice to do it. Um, if you haven't checked him out on YouTube, go, go and have a look guys. Um, and you, you'll be able to uh, follow the, the, his story on that. So he was recovering from, he, he'd recovered from COVID. Um, he had it, I think, two or three weeks prior to doing this uh, 100 miler. So he decided to do it in, in November, very little training, and uh, he went out there. So again, yeah, his battle was, was, was similar to mine. It's going to be um, a very mental and uh, physical battle. So. Yeah, that's where I got my inspiration from. So I did message uh, Craig through his YouTube channel and through Facebook, um, asking for any tips. Um, he fair play. He, he gave me a few t a few tips. So he was kind of um, my new inspiration for it, really. Even though I, I'd had it in the back of my mind for for a number of months, he was like the um, almost like the stump to say, "Yeah, you can go. You can do this." Um, you know, he, he went on. He done it himself, and he just gave me that inspiration and that that sort of know how and that uh, sort of courage really to just think, "Yeah, let's get out there. Let's just plan it, plan it well, and let's get it done." So I've got a lot to to to, to thank Craig for on that. So yeah, um, and, and that's that's where we were born from, really, and that's 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 where we were. Um, so I've also, <laughs> a lot of people have said to me, what next? Um, there's always a what next, isn't there? Um, when, when somebody does a, a big challenge, there's always a what next. Um, well, for this year, there, there is no what next, um, as in big challenge. I'm just going to finish the races that I've already signed up for, which is the Brecon to Cardiff um, Ultra Marathon, which is a 44 mile linear route. Um, and that's the one which uh, I pulled myself off in, February 2020 because um, I was struggling with a, with a severe bout of, I don't know whether it was flu, it could have been COVID, I have no idea, but I basically I couldn't breathe properly so I got to the halfway point and withdrew from the race um, and I've never done that. Um, and then I've also got the, the rhythm, uh, the rhythm will start in Penalda Park again, it's in the same uh, start and finish point where um, I done my 100 miler, uh, but this time it'll be very hilly, it'll be up over uh, Machen Mountain, Caffili Mountain, Eglois Mountain and then back, to, uh, that's a 32 miler. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one, uh, you know, uh, we've done that one before, so I have done a, a YouTube channel, a YouTube video on that one previously, uh, where we um, we trialled the route out uh, during lockdown. Um, and then I'm also toying with the idea, uh, we've been speaking to Rhys Jenkins from um, the Pegasus Ultra Running, and I'm toying with the idea in two weeks time to do the Howam. Uh, which is up in Plan Dylos, um, and that's a 30 miler. Um, the jury's still out at the moment on that one because 
Um, I'm still having a little bit of uh, hip pain, um, but it has subsided an awful lot. So if I can sort that out, get a bit of physio on it, get a bit of strength work on it, and maybe that race will be my tester to see um, if, I've, if, it's, if I've recovered from it. So that's it guys, um, in, in a nutshell. Um, I'd, like to say, I'd like to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. Um, a massive thank you goes out to, to Dean Livingstone, who, uh, who was a professional photographer who stuck with me um, throughout the, the both days. Uh, he was there start, finish, and he kept popping up en route, uh, taking some photographs, um, some aerial uh, videos as well. So um, yeah, he's, he's a really top, top lad. Um, and he wouldn't take anything for it. He said because it's for charity, um, and he, he, you know, he was happy to donate his time. So a massive thank you for that, Dean. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. And again, I'd just like to thank everybody that came out in support. Uh, the support was absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, hello. Check out. Can't you can't you can't pay for that? Right, thank right, you. Cool. Shut up, Bobby. Yeah, so like I was saying guys, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, the support and encouragement was absolutely amazing. Um, I couldn't have done it without you. So uh, here's to the next big thing. See you soon. Stupid cow. Stupid dog. Come here. Come here. Now. Come here. Come here. Get beat. 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 Ah! Ah! Oh, come on, come on, come on.